Bob Barth is an explorer. He ventures beyond the borders with plants that unite our global community to discover their purpose and appreciate their beauty. On his hillside property shared with partner Noreen, he grows cold hardy cacti and succulents in the ground. Others reside in greenhouses where he grows and propagates plants chosen from universal wholesale nurseries. His passion is also to educate and preserve plants that are losing habitat, an interest that germinated when he was a biology professor at the University of Texas. Back in the early 70s, they were doing uh, a series of informal classes at UT, and one of them uh, was on cacti and succulents. And I had, I think just before that, picked up a few cacti at local nurseries and thought their shapes and textures uh, were really interesting. Meeting like-minded gardeners, they formed the Austin Cactus and Succulent Society to educate themselves and others. Through meetings, online, and semi-annual sales, they foster an enthusiasm that continues to grow. Maybe in part because uh, our climate seems to be drying out, that cacti and succulents have become much more popular. There's a lot more varieties available now which are actually reasonably cold hardy and can be grown outside. When I first started this little desert garden along my driveway, you could get sotals, you could get uh, agave lofantha, and maybe a few other things. But since that time, so many more possibilities are now available. As a biologist, Bob wanted to know more. In a wire cage greenhouse, he studies plants like aloes. Aloes are native to uh, southern and east Africa and also the Arabian Peninsula and the island of Madagascar. What we're looking at here mainly are uh, hybrids. California growers have hybridized varieties with intriguing colors and textures. Aloes want good sunlight and dry soil. In South Africa, they are garden plants, but most need protection from harsh winter cold in Texas. In Southern California and around here, where if you have aloes blooming, uh, they will be visited by hummingbirds. Related to aloe is Haworthia, another cold tender plant to be protected in winter. They're all from South Africa, actually. Some of these are hybrids, a lot of them are native species in South Africa. They color up nicely with a certain amount of sun, and the nice thing about this particular facility is that it gets sun in the morning and is shaded by and large in the afternoon. In habitat, they tend to grow under semi-desert shrubs and things like that. Cold tender plants move to a temperature-controlled greenhouse in winter, where Bob grows plants year-round. From tall to tiny, he grows multiple genera and species of succulents and cacti. He represents new world plants like cacti and agaves. From the old world, haworthias, aloes, and succulent euphorbias. Another greenhouse sits atop the carport, an idea from one of his grad students to get the sunniest spot for cacti and others. His fascination with these distinctive plants? It has to do with their unusual shapes, uh, unusual colors, textures, and so forth. Some of them are astrophytums. It's a small genus of cacti. Uh, there are only about half a dozen actual species, but they are very good subjects for hybridization. And the thing that's so interesting about the astrophytums is some of them are totally spineless, others uh, have a few spines, but they have interesting patterns of uh, white markings on the, on the surface of the plant. And uh, if you make hybrids, you can get all kinds of really interesting patterns. The mellow cactus are just as distinctive. In habitat, their flowers are pollinated by hummingbirds. It's a genus of cacti that is found in semi-arid areas uh, in the tropics. Uh, a lot of species in Brazil of the mellow cactus. And basically, it's a type of cactus that lives for a while as a vegetative, typical-looking cactus. But when it decides that it's mature, 
it stops the normal vegetative growth and puts on this bristly structure uh, on the top of it it's called a cephalium and out of that bristly structure will come the uh, the little pink flowers and then the little pink fruits that develop afterwards. Plants growing in full sun protect themselves from sunburn with reflective coloration or woolly texture. Others that would grow under shrubs in habitat expose more of the skin for photosynthesis. Coloration on some echeverias protects them from ultraviolet light. It's a white powdery substance that the plant produces as it develops its leaves. The powder is only generated as the leaf is developing, and once the leaf is fully developed, it won't produce any more powder. Bob grows his echeverias in the wire cage greenhouse. A home gardener can just provide morning sun. Because they do need the sun to keep them from etiolating, from getting leggy, and also to keep the color on the leaves. Most of the echeverias come from the highlands in Mexico, which makes them a little tough uh, to grow here in Texas because it's so hot in the summertime. Succulents, by their very name, have developed strategies to store water when it's scarce. Cacti and most of the succulent euphorbias store it in their stems. Echeveria store water in their leaves, while Adeniums and Pacopodiums store water in a ball-shaped structure called the caudex. Some strategize to raise the next generation. The lithops are a, um, a genus of plants that is found uh, mainly in South Africa and Namibia, and uh, they have a very interesting uh, growth cycle. They consist of two leaves fused together with a, with a, a crack between the two. And uh, in the fall of the year for us, when we grow them in, in cultivation, the flower, the flower bud comes out of that crack between the two leaves. A new plant starts developing inside the old one, splits the old one open, and gradually sucks all the moisture out of the old plant. Spines multitask. The spination can have a variety of uh, different functions. Of course, it can protect the plant from, from herbivores because uh, they're not so pleasant for an animal to try to eat if they're spiny. And the spines also can shade the plant and they can also uh, serve to collect moisture, which then can drip down around the base of the plant, and then the roots get access to the moisture. In his greenhouses, Bob can protect from too much water, like flooding rains. But succulents do need moisture. In spring and fall, he waters every couple of weeks. In summer, often once a week. In winter, it's monthly or every six weeks, depending on sunlight. Along with promoting garden water conservation, Bob's global connection to plants and the wildlife that depend on them is significant. Well, I think it, uh, it helps us to realize how important it is to preserve habitats uh, and preserve species uh, as much as we can. Madagascar is, a, is a, a case in point because a very high percentage of, of the plants and the animals uh, that occur in Madagascar are found nowhere else in the world. It's important to try to, to save at least some of the habitat. There are lots of conservation organizations these days that are, that are working in that direction, and I think we're making some progress. Mm -hmm.